Well, here to help us take a closer look at UNC's season opening win over Florida A&M University is CL Brown of the Raleigh News and Observer. CL, first off, how you doing tonight? Hey, everything is great. Football season is back, right? Hey, you can't, can't be bad. <laughs> you can't be bad and you can't be mad, especially if you're a Carolina fan, given what you saw from first time starting quarterback Drake May last night. So I have to ask, was it the fearlessness that he displayed catapulting into the end zone? Was it just his mobility? What about his first career start impressed you the most? I mean, I don't I don't even know if it's fearlessness <laughs> or if it's it's a little bit of uh, blissful ignorance. <laughs> He's <laughs> young. That from before. Knowing that now you're kind of you're the guy you got to take care of yourself, uh, but uh, you, you do like to see the competitive fire that that Drake may had and and he was impressive. I mean, after the game, he kind of uh, felt like he should have hit on a couple more of the big throws that he made, but he still hit three passes for over 20 yards, which, you know, they kind of were defined by explosive plays under Sam Howell. So. I think all in all, you got to be happy if you're a Carolina fan with Drake May's first performance. Found 10 different receivers, hit four different receivers for touchdowns, including, of course, the tight ends lumping them in that group. Mac Brown said earlier in the week that he felt like the depth kind of downfield is one of the biggest assets. How much will that help Drake May being able to spread the ball out like he did last night? Yeah. Um, I think getting the tight ends involved, that was something that they talked about last year, but it never really manifested itself. And so this year uh, for this first game to see all three tight ends catch multiple passes, John Copenhaver even should have had a touchdown. Kamari Mor Morales and, and Bryson Nesbitt both got one for themselves. But I think by spreading the ball around like they were able to do, it's just going to open things up for Josh Downs. And, you know, he's we saw it what kind of uh, value he brings to the offense all through last season when he set program records for catches and, and uh, receiving yards. And so even last night, it seemed like early on, May was, May was dunking the ball to a lot of different receivers. And then later in the game, everything really picked up for Josh Downs. And, you know, he was able to, to get loose and catch two touchdown passes. So it, it's, it's going to seem like right now the, the offense is going to, be uh, you know make a seamless transition from the Sam Howell era to uh, the Drake May era and of course can't talk about the offense without talking about the freshman running back duo of Amari and Hampton and George Petaway I think there was kind of concern maybe maybe not concern maybe not the right word but just a lot of question marks surrounding that running back room especially yeah. with British Brooks having going down about a, two weeks before the season how impressed were you with what those freshmen were able to do on Saturday night yeah, I, I think Matt Brown kind of had a Cheshire grin when he was talking about the running back room because even though they were unproven, he knew what kind of talent he had. And and now we all know what kind of talent they have with, with the way Omarion Hampton was just, uh, he's, he's such an incredible blend of, of power and speed. Um, and, and George Petaway kind of has that shiftiness to him where, you know, on, on one of his long runs, it was a it, it was a pretty amazing cut that he made to kind of break free and, and just kind of left the defender standing in his socks, so to speak. So it's going to be fun to see those guys develop moving forward. I mean, you know, they came into the game. DJ Jones was was the number one running back and, and made that start. But it looks like it's going to be hard to keep Omarion Hampton and, and George Petaway off the field. And, and I think they're going to they're going to get more and more reps as the season goes on. Now, defensively, this was not the prettiest of games at times, especially for that secondary. It just felt like there was too much space in between them and FAMU's receivers multiple times. Of course, that is a credit to Musa and what he was able to do. Mac Brown really didn't seem to make too much of it post-game, at least. He kind of credited it to being the first time this defensive staff is together coaching a game. But should Carolina fans be a little concerned in that area of the field? I don't think so. Not not the first game. Um, you know, as, as Mac Brown pointed out, this is the first time Gene Chizik has been off basically for five years, you know, away from football. So uh, getting him kind of back and, and used to the rhythm of the game and calling a game. And it, it was new for everybody last night. And it was really new because they didn't really know what Florida A&M was going to throw at them. I think part of the reason why we've just kind of become accustomed to, to dominating defenses is, is the way these guys study so much film and tape and know and scout their opponents so much. Well, 
uh, as Cedric Gay, the linebacker, said last night, it, this was a little bit of a mystery in the first game as to how uh, how Florida a was going to play it. But I, I think one positive sign that that you can take for, for Carolina fans from last night was the way that they stuffed the run still. I mean, Florida a was committed to trying to make those quick hit passes, but, you know, Carolina didn't have very many games last year. I think it was only two games last year where they held an opponent under 100 yards rushing, and they did that last night. So moving forward, I think they'll work out some of the kinks. I, I think a possible concern is, you know, the health of Tony Grimes, uh, the cornerback who, who uh, uh, was injured in the first quarter and did not return. So that, that'll be something to keep an eye on because they get awfully young going to Dante ball for it cornerback. But, you know, I mean, I, I think it was, it was uh, an opening game that, that had some promise and had some question marks that they'll have to fix going into Boone on Saturday against Appalachian state. If there's one thing specifically that you would like to see UNC kind of fix going to Boone on Saturday, what would that one thing be? That's, that's a good question. Um, I'm kind of, I kind of feel like Appalachian state is going to be a bit of an unknown. I, I guess, the one thing I would, I, I'm going to be looking for out of Carolina uh, on Saturday is just how they handle this road situation. Mm -hmm. In the last three years, or I should say in the first three years under Mac Brown's second tenure, they haven't been a very consistent road team. Um, it hadn't really matter who the opponent is, whether they were quote unquote favored or not on the road has, has been a consistent problem for them. So um, I'm, I'm looking at just how they come out. You know, are they going to come out flat, which they, they have a tendency to do in road games? It's, it's maybe been road night games that's given them the problems, but um, this is going to be a huge one for Appalachian State and the city of Boone. So uh, it's going to be a charged environment, and, and obviously Appalachian State came to Chapel Hill and won uh, two years ago or three years ago. So um, they, they, Carolina owes them one going back. So we'll see how they respond. Sellout crowd on Saturday night. CL, thank you so much for your time and expertise. We appreciate it.